It's an empty ceramic beaker with a heart symbol. It's an empty ceramic beaker with a diamond symbol. It's an empty ceramic beaker with a clover symbol. This should make the cherry soda undiet. Sweet! Yes, it should be sweeter. No, I meant sweet as in that's cool. Sorry for the confusion. Next time I'll just say awesome. I'm not putting my hands on those. That potato masher looks like it might bite me. Liquid in the hot beaker turned purple.
The liquid in the diamond beaker turned bright orange. Already done that. Interesting. The liquid in the clover beaker turned bright green. It's a Bunsen burner. A small stove used to heat things. This must be the control valve for the Bunsen burner. Mona, wait. Here's the plan. As you turn up the gas, we're going to leap into the air. That way, in the unfortunate event of an explosion, its force will carry us safely away instead of incinerating us at ground zero. Uh... Explosions are so exciting. All right, ready? One, two, three. Dang, that's one lame flame. Cauldron hotter! Add fishnet stockings and high heels.
just don't know why, but for some reason, I can never seem to get my hands warm. Do you think the fact that you're a walking corpse has anything to do with it? that stuff, but it's got quite a kick. Kind of reminds me of the bat shine my Uncle Jesse used to make. I remember this one time, I brought a jar of it to a party. All I really remember is taking the first couple of sips. Then the next thing you know, it's five hours later, I'm in a complete stranger's belfry, I suddenly have this new tattoo, and to top it all off, my pants are missing. This sounds like an incredibly touching story, but I'm afraid we don't have time to hear it right now. Vodrick, it's boiling. It has turned bright red. It worked. It's a pair of rickety old columns holding up the walkway. It doesn't look like they've been used for years. I'm pretty sure those columns are made out of pyrogony, an extremely rare and special Draxylvanian wood. Pyrogony wood is very resistant to flame. It's pretty much impossible to burn. That's probably why the Baroness used it down here, so that the demonic snot wouldn't catch it on fire. Let's try the magic acid we made on those columns. Yeah. 
it. The walkway is down now. It's a pile of bones the skeleton made when it collapsed. Let's just get what we need and get out of here. Go! Back? Stay back, I say. I don't wish to harm you, but I'll do so if you leave me no choice. What now? Can't anything ever be easy? It's some kind of ghost. I'd call her a banshee. Or more specifically, a really pissed off Irish banshee. Hello. May I talk to you? My name is Shannon O'Doherty. I've come from Ireland to search far and wide for my one true love. How did you end up in Draxylvania, of all places? I did some research into local demographics. There appeared to be a discrepancy in regards to the number of men versus the number of women in the greater Draxylvanian area. Apparently, many of the women have died over recent years due to an unusual outbreak of anemia. Interestingly enough, this same affliction seems to have taken its toll on the local paperboy population. I figured with so many men available, I was bound to find my one true love. Were you able to find a man? Indeed I was. Not long after I arrived here with my tour group, I received a letter at my hotel. It was addressed to me from Burgermeister Willem Vinton, mayor of Gulfport Falls. He said he was interested in meeting me after catching a glimpse of my fiery red hair. Did you ever get to meet this Burgermeister Willem Vinton? Yes, but only briefly. He came to my hotel saying he wanted to meet me. As the mayor of Gothford Falls, he always enjoyed spending time with young ladies new to the area. I believe he took a liking to me, for he invited me to come up to his room so we could discuss Draxylvanian history. Sounds like this Burgermeister was looking to get to know a wee bit of the Irish. this castle. A woman came to speak with our tour group, saying that she was the Baroness von Kiefer. She asked me how old I was and how it came to be that I was in Draxylvania. After I told her about myself, she offered me a job working at her castle. Since I knew that I had found my true love in Willem, I decided to stay in Draxylvania and took her up on her offer. The first night in the castle, the Baroness brought me a warm cup of tea. After taking a drink, I grew very tired, and the next thing I remember is waking up here. Why don't you leave here? I surely want to, but until my bones can be buried in a consecrated grave, I must guard them till the end of time. Mm, bummer. All of your bones, you say, or most of them? Good question. I'll have to ask. Ask whom? Another good question. My, you're just full of them. Why do you ask, anyway? Never mind. Uh, don't worry about it. Would it be alright if we borrowed one of those bones there? I can't let you do that. I'm saving them for my burial in consecrated ground. I feel the need to stay here until that happens. Do you guard your bones all the time? I must stand vigil through this endless night. My true love, Willem, rescues me at dawn. He'll bury my bones and hold me in his arms forever. Oh, how I long for the morning. Hmm. Well, thank you for our little chat. It was me pleasure. Mona, it's clear that there's no way we're gonna get those bones while she's still guarding them. And she's apparently gonna be guarding them until the sun comes up. But that will be too late. I can't wait until the sun rises. Then I guess we're in deep guano. No virgin ghost is going to stop me. Mona, I like your confidence. 